There are things in this world that seems to be immune to criticism. That the population collectively have agreed that any negative opinions towards this one thing must be answered with public humiliation and a fistful of bees shoved down your throat. And in Japan, Gundam is that very thing. It is hailed as the second coming of Christ that then turns Super Saiyan just to then cure cancer. Wherever you look, when someone talks about Gundam, they praise it as if it was some generous deity. This praise that only talks about how this series have moved Japanese people gave me some conflicting yet weird expectation for this story. This retelling of that one anime series from the 70s that captured a generation has to try and dance with the manga medium and live up to not just their expectation but mine as well. And I have a feeling that they don't align. Now these conflicting expectations stem from the back of the volumes that have essays from manga artists that put this manga as well as the original anime on the highest pedestal that I have ever seen. Normally I'll try to review the series while disregarding hype, but since every volume comes with hype, then in this case, I can't ignore it. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what is, in the eyes of the great nation of Japan, one of the most important works of fiction. Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin. Hello everyone, this is my name is Adarius and welcome to the review of Mobile Soul Gundam The Origin. This is actually one of the rare occasions where the anime came first and the manga came second. The manga was released back in 1979 and was later made into three movies. The character designer on the anime, Yoshikazu Yashiko, thought that there were pieces of the story and characters that would benefit with more depth added to it, so a manga was planned. 22 years later. A small endeavor that ran from June 25th, 2001 until June 25th, 2011. It was collected into 23 volumes and later translated and released into 12 absolute gorgeous volume by Vertical that ran from 2013 until 2015. These volumes are some of the highest quality manga that I have ever had the pleasure of owning. These hardcovers are exceptionally sturdy and the photo paper makes the ink spring off the pages and manages to portray some exceptionally deep blacks. They also come with a fuck ton of color pages that more often than not bookends each chapter and elevates the whole reading experience. And at the end of each volume, there is a guest artist or expert giving their two cents on the manga. These offer some great insights and also a future tangent for the video. Now the quality of these volumes might have elevated the reading experience, but I'll try my best to not let it overshadow the story itself. And I have also not seen the original anime, so I do not know which part of the story might have been improved. This review will solely focus on the manga itself. For the past half a century, humanity has been sending the excess population to colonies in space to handle the population's desire to imitate rabbits. These big cylinders being the only place the so-called space noids can call home. Then in the universal year 79, Space Colony Site 3, the furthest from the Earth, thinks the Blue Marbles is England and declares its independence. Then began a war that in just six months wiped out 50% of the human population. There is terror and destruction everywhere, and the other colonies are trapped in the middle of a battle they won't participate in. Amuro Ray from Site 7 finds his father's prototype, a new mobile suit called Gundam, during an attack from Site 3. Here he manages to pilot it and destroy two opposing mobile suits, thus becoming its only pilot, apparently. He, as well as every other citizen, flee to White Base and end up escaping Site 7. White Base must now fight in a war with an inexperienced crew and civilians, with only the new Gundam to help tip the scales a bit. There's a lot more to the story, but in general, this is the setup. We end up following White Base until the end of the series, see them try to find refugee, helping the Earth Federation try to win the war, and train to become better soldiers. There are a lot of characters to join, and not all of them feel relevant to the story, but it does give it some needed complexity. Just know that you are in for a military-driven story with strategic war meetings and all. Yard and Gundam is both great and absolutely horrendous. Yasuhiko perfectly emulates the look of the anime with some modern techniques sprinkled throughout. There is this simplicity to the art that disarms you, making you think this is all it can manage. But then you are hit with some complex background shots, effects or Gundams. When it works, 
it's an absolute marvel to look at, like a snapshot of the past. But when it doesn't, it doesn't just take you out of the story, but completely ruins it. However, nothing bad can be said about the color pages. Yasuhiko's usage of watercolor is fucking masterful. These pages are always a highlight, and even if the story falters and make you question its historical credibility, they end up making you forget that and just enjoy the art. And sure, it's obvious that Yasuhiko didn't start out in manga, but that also means that his tool approach is more unorthodox, which creates at least unique results. When Makoto Yukimura of Winland Saga gives up on using the same type of pencil because it is too difficult for him, then you have to give praise where it's due. But this can only carry out so far. Yasuhiko's missing knowledge of how to effectively use the manga medium, even if he has over 20 years of experience when he drew Gundam, makes every action scene unreadable. The missing understanding of how to set up Panels and image flow ruins the readability as well as the art. Now I won't bash him too hard since his experience does show and he manages the dialogue scenes well. It's just that when someone has to do something physical, he just closes his eye, draws explosions because that's what the kids like. Look! Gundam go brrrr! Now since we are in the territory of me just pissing on this manga, I might as well just get it all out so we can end this on a more positive note. But believe me, I have some gripes. I've already touched upon this, but the action scenes are bordering unreadable, and I do mean that. You need Sherlock Holmes levels of observation and deduction to keep track of who is where and doing what and what the fuck is happening in the panels. The missing overview of where people are in three-dimensional space and what action they are doing makes you feel like you are reading the equivalent of an inflatable tube man on his 74th cup of espresso shooting a shaker cam scene. And considering the insistence to include action in almost every chapter makes it a big Deal. And the fact that all the mobile suits look alike doesn't help either. Then there is Amaro. This kid refuses to change as a character and has the likability of a dinner plate full of cat urine. He is constantly angry and insists on being the sole pilot for the Gundam. Just because. Now this doesn't my character growth, but that doesn't happen until after a lengthy flashback. And with no redeeming qualities like ability or interesting development, he ends up dragging the enjoyment of the manga through the gutter. Alright, it's petty tendon time. At the end of Volume 12, there is a conversation between Yasuhiko and Tatsuro Yuchida. Yuchida is a professor in literature. In their conversation where they praise Gundam to the heavens, they briefly mention One Piece. And oh boy, do Uchida have something to say about it. He had to read 60 plus volumes to create a thesis from one of his students and thinks afterwards One Piece is a symbol story that is selfless friendship non-stop where people with self-interest get punished by people who self-sacrifice. Rinse and repeat through the whole manga. It is apparently a one-trick pony, yet Gundam is filled with complexity. I'm sorry, but that is selling One Piece short. Way short. Like it or not, One Piece has deep themes where people are complex, friendship can only get you so far, the world is grey, and every civilization has their skeletons. Praising Gundam for its use of politics and war schemes, but denying One Piece the same, is a short-sighted, outdated look at literature just because one is from your childhood and the other happens to be new and popular. Sure, One Piece values relationships with the core crew, but it has never been a one-trick pony. If it were, it wouldn't have seen the success that it has. And this conversation at the tail end of the manga tarnished my view of Yasuhiko and tainted my experience with the manga. I won't let this sway my opinion of the manga itself, but I do have a sour taste in my mouth. The shortcoming of praising a piece of art while being ignorant of its flaws paints you as a fan of the idea of the art rather than the art itself. Tangent over. Now, as I stated before the tangent, there is a lengthy flashback in here. It begins with volume 5 and ends with 7. 25% of the series is dedicated to the actual setup, but comes in the middle of the story. Sure, it gives some context to the war and specific characters, but the placement is exceptionally awkward. And considering the rather weird intro in volume 1, you end up asking yourself, why did we waste so much time on that when it just ended up confusing you? And once you're done with the flashback, you are thrown right back into the war but you can't remember where we are or what was going down just before the flashback since 25% of the story just happened. It should definitely have been spread more throughout the story when the context needed it. And then there's the ending. It is as abrupt and quick as a kick in the teeth. All this build up 
getting close to the end game of the whole war and it just ends. No resolution to the conflict, no completed character arcs, nothing. This screams that we are talking about the first season of a long series and the bad guys can't lose yet. But this is a manga series, not a show. Even if the war is going to continue, you still need a sense of finality and accomplishment for your story. Otherwise, what's the point? And I know I'm giving it a hard time, but again, each volume hypes up the series to be like the third edition of the testament. It thinks so high of itself that it refuses to evolve and do the story justice. And there is a great story buried in here. But before I get to that, I might as well just highlight some of the things that it actually does well. Once the flashback is over, Amuro takes a long, hard look in the mirror, slaps himself and actually becomes a decent character. He is more affected by what's happening around him and he grows and you can almost tolerate him at the end of the story and dare I say, root for him? The story is also for the most part exceptionally focused. You rarely spend time on distractions that are only present to pad the time. Besides a few sections, most battles and setups have a story or characteristic purpose, something that makes it easier to continue reading. And it's a believable underdog story. White Base is a ship of inexperienced young soldiers who are guessing all the way that through grit and persistence manage to stay alive and keep going. And Amuro only ruins this aspect half the time until the flashback. And great use of military tactics. The sheer commitment to this makes the incomprehensive battle easier to understand, at least what is supposed to happen, even if you can rarely tell. And it also doesn't hurt that each volume has this last time in Gundam Origin, since you can often forget where we are or what incidents are important to the story right now. Sure, the fact that it's even an issue is a shortcoming of the manga itself, but I will praise its use of the summary and would like to see it more often than just a wall of text that other mangas usually just default to. There's a lot to get with Gundam The Origin. The action is poorly depicted and the use of panels makes it hard to follow the intended flow. More often than not, you will just be sitting there looking at explosions and wondering, was that an enemy that just blew up? The main character also doesn't help with the reading engagement as he is insufferable and they refuses to grow as a character for the first half of the series. There's a giant flashback sandwich in the middle of the story and it's too clunky paced and delivered to be utilized in that moment. And the ending is abrupt and lacks any sense of closure. Luckily, Emerald does become a better character after the flashback and can better be justified to carry the reader through the series. This is elevated by, for the most part, a laser focused story that wants to depict an epic war between two opposing yet valid ideologies, even if one side is depicted as evil. And the usage of the underdog format makes the reading experience more engaging than if it was just a power fantasy. And I also can't deny that these beautiful volumes by Vertical with their breathtaking color pages sweetens the reading experience immensely. So with that in mind, I will say that Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin it is worth buying and reading in Standard Edition. My suggestion for you, if you want to read it, is to ignore all the interviews at the back of the volumes until after you've finished the series. That way, they won't hype the story up for it to eventually disappoint you. So, Gonna Be Honored, have you read it? What do you think about it? And if you have seen the original anime or the movie trilogy, how does it even compare? Whatever you think, come around me your thoughts. And always, I'll see you next video. Remember to stay awesome. See ya! Whew, that was a big one.